There's a term in Hindi called dhoom dhadake se, as in high impact. That's exactly what our show is all about today. Extremely dhoom dhadake ki high impact on the show. We'll start off with the high risk of multitasking. Now, with all the devices and everything else that we have today, the kind of electronics we have, we all multitask and we are thrilled with the fact we can do so many things almost together. But is there a price we pay for it? Then the incredible new K20 from Xiaomi, the incredible new Realme X, from Realme and the incredible chip that is turning out to be the MediaTek, the Helios P22. A whole array of devices now run with this chip. We'll tell you a lot more about that. So that's what I said. High impact, dhoom dharaka. Let's get started. Xiaomi unveiled Redmi's flagship, the K20 and the K20 Pro. We review the K20 this week and find out if you should buy it. Realme launched the X with dual camera and beautiful design in India and we find out if it has the X factor for us to recommend it for you. Texting and driving, watching TV and eating while multitasking is now our way of life with smartphones in our hands, is it really safe and good? And Samsung brings the A80 which comes with 48 megapixel rotating triple camera for 47,990 rupees. So lots and lots happening on the show, but before we get started with all of that, of course, it's news coming in from the world of mobiles. Samsung has launched the A80 in India for 47,990 rupees. The A80 houses the world's first rotating dual camera with 48 megapixel main lens and a 6.7 inch Full HD Plus Super AMOLED display. Other features of the Samsung A80 include a Qualcomm 730, 3700 mAh battery, 128 GB internal memory and 8 GB RAM. We will review the A80 soon on Cellguru. In a move to improve revenue and profit in India, Apple has taken the lower-priced iPhones off the shelves in the Indian market. Apple has stopped selling the iPhone SE, 6, 6 Plus and 6S Plus in India, making it more expensive to buy an entry-level iPhone. iPhone SE, 6S and 7 used to be locally assembled in India. This capacity will now be used to expand production of other models. An industry executive said, Apple India's sales in the April-June quarter had gone up after it dropped iPhone XR prices. Now, lots of you have been sending in questions to us ever since we've started the burning question of the week segment. And this time, a lot of you have spoken about multitasking. And is it really, really something that is efficient? Because lots of reports have started to come out saying that there is a high risk and a penalty to pay for all the multitasking that we think we're doing. So it's texting and driving, listening to music and crossing the road, watching TV and eating. I'm sure we're all guilty of doing at least one of these things. But these multitasking scenarios can cost us our life. Multitasking is no joke. It's a high risk verb that has only been made more convenient by the one gadget we love to use all the time, our smartphones. Smartphones today give us multiple opportunities to multitask. Think how many apps do you have open? How many times do you switch from each of them? You believe you're taking care of everything, your calendar, your task, you're re replying to emails, you're actually doing to-do lists. But would you like it if while presenting the show to you right now, right now, I take a second to check my mail or make a phone call and do all of that while I'm still taking a walk or talking to you? It's not only just annoying for the person on the receiving end, but it even affects the brain, which is designed to do a single task at a time and is now asked to do two, three, or even more. We aren't making our minds more efficient, nor using time more efficiently while doing so. We're being inefficient at every job involved in the process hampering our performance. And that's exactly why most countries have banned texting and driving. Look, even though I'm not talking about just things risky like texting and driving, let me explain this to you. So we believe we're doing five, six different tasks, but the focus is so poor that we're actually replying to our emails in a very poor way. We're putting in calendar appointments but actually putting them wrong. Everything that you're multitasking is being done in a very poor manner. Sure, many think that multitasking is more beneficial, saves us time, but the risk that comes along with it deserves some more deep thought from you. You wouldn't let your child watch TV and study at the same time, would you? Yet others that are called millennials, X generation, Z generation are doing that and you have seen them suffer. Here's what you can do to manage your multitasking. First, try and combine only one task and once you finish that task completely, 
move to the other one. So you can multitask, but do one task after the other one is over and have no emotional bits involved at all. Like you can compose an email, finish it and then start working on a presentation that can work for you. You can sit down and do multiple things, what one after the other. Second, be realistic about how well you can perform more than one task together. Like listening to music in the car is fine, but if the road condition worsen, it's okay to mute it and totally and absolutely focus on the road and the weather conditions around it. Third, do what emotionally lifts you. Instead of multitasking, take some rest breaks, get your social media fixed during a break. And now, Let's move on to our top story. Not a week goes by where one company will not come up with something that completely destroyed the market before it. So this is the Realme X and this is a beautiful phone. Just look at this polar white or whatever else they call it, pearl white, beautiful looking phone. But once again, it's the specs that are really, really out of this world. At 17,000 rupees, they've literally given you everything you need. And this is a phone which I think if it was released three months back by some other company would be 25 to 30,000 rupees. So take a look at this, the Realme X. Make way for Realme's new series that seems to be snazzy and full of pizzazz. This is the Realme X which starts at rupees 16,999 for the 4GB RAM variant and is a rebranding of sorts of the pro editions that the company used to come out with. But with the competition really heating up from the likes of Xiaomi, what is the X factor that this phone brings? And how does Realme plan to take on the competition? Let's dive into the review and also find out from the company. The big highlight of this series seems to be the design. The phone looks and feels premium unlike some of the other phones in this segment. We got the polar white variant for review and love the S-shaped light curve on the back. But the Realme X comes in many color variants including a striking space blue and special onion and garlic designer editions. There is also a Realme X Spider-Man Far From Home Edition which is priced at 20,999 rupees. And that's for the attractive design the phone brings. In terms of display, it comes with a beautiful full screen display with no notch to distract video watching on this phone. The notch is done away with and there is a pop-up front camera which is lodged in there with the pulse motor. The pop-up camera takes less than a second to come out even while unlocking the phone with face recognition. One of the best parts is that this phone is not a delicate darling. There is a Corning Gorilla Glass 5 protection in the front and the pop-up camera instantly retracts if the phone slips from your hand. The display is nice and large at 6.53 inches. It is a full HD Plus display along with a Super AMOLED display. The colors are crisp and the screen is stunning at this price point. There is also Dolby Atmos in this phone which makes it quite a video watching delight. There is an in-display fingerprint sensor to unlock the phone which is pretty smooth and quick to use. Coming to the optics, in the world of triple lens, Realme remains confident with two lenses. There is a 48 megapixel Sony IMX586 sensor along with a 5 megapixel secondary lens. Images we clicked from this phone were exceptional. The details were impressive and the colors were not overly saturated. There is a nightscape mode which seems enhanced from their previous phone. The front camera is 16 megapixels and gave us realistic selfies in good light. Realme has gone with the Snapdragon 710 in this phone. This was also seen in the previous Realme 3 Pro which came at a slightly lower price point. There are no complaints on the performance front and the phone does well with heavy games like PUBG also. The phone doesn't heat up while gaming which is a big plus. The Realme X runs on Color OS 6 based on Android 9. The software is not too great. There are many preloaded apps in this phone that make it quite cluttered and given a fixed storage on this phone of 128GB, this isn't good news. On the battery front, there is a 3765 mAh battery. This makes the phone last one full day of heavy use. There is Vook 3.0 fast charge support with finally a USB Type-C slot. And now for our verdict, the Realme X has more than one X factor in it. It rides high on a premium design, stunning full screen display and good hardware. The phone is a bit limited with a fixed storage and the software could have been slightly cleaner. But that said, under 20,000 rupees, Realme offers a strong proposition with a reliable phone that is meant for watching videos and will do well with gaming also. Realme has set the ball rolling for a promising series. So in my hand is the Redmi K20. Now there is another version, the K20 Pro, but both phones have really made some very interesting headlines. So I'm going to read this out. 48 megapixel AI rear triple camera, 20 megapixel pop-up selfie camera, Qualcomm Snapdragon 730 processor. This is on this one, the K20. The K20 Pro has the 855 AMOLED display with Corning Gorilla Glass 5 and fabulous looking phone. So this is the Redmi K20. 
let me just get this off and show it to you. So, looks absolutely fabulous, right? At 22,000 rupees, this really tick marks literally everything that you want in a phone. And remember, it's 22,000 rupees. You want to go absolutely to the top of the line, go for the K20 Pro at 27,000 rupees and some change. You're getting literally everything a flagship phone can give you. So in this world of high performance phones that are coming in at prices that were unheard of just maybe a few months back, this one is really making headlines. Today, we're going to take a look at the K20. Xiaomi's K20 series is paving a new path for the company as it has the first flagships of the Redmi series price starting 21,999 rupees. There is an elder high spec sibling, the K20 Pro, which too got launched alongside with the K20, which comes with Snapdragon 855, 8GB RAM, 256GB storage, better Sony sensor, and a 27 watt charge support. But we will review the Pro version next week. It took Xiaomi five years to come up with this K20 series, and here is why. On me, we've had flagships, but on the Redmi side, it's actually extending that entire price value equation that people have come to expect from us, our fans have come to expect from us over the five years. And if you realize, what we started off was a Redmi 1S five years ago, which was a 699 product, and slowly as we've been improving our overall quality, we've been focusing more on Make in India, and of course reaching a whole lot of new people, uh, we've moved up the, the prices. And at this point, after five years, we thought all the things that we need were ready in terms of our understanding of the consumers, our component manufacturing, our uh, overall local assembly, everything else coming in together. Uh, we thought this was the right time. The Xiaomi K20 has almost everything going right for it. We will start with the design of the phone, which Xiaomi claims is like no other. The Aura Prime design gives the phone a dual tone display which fires up a room full of light. We got the Glacier Blue which is beautiful and yes, it stands out even in a low lit room. The phone is light and comfortable to hold. Love the all screen design with no notch and no hole. There is a 3.5mm headphone jack on board and there is an in-display fingerprint scanner which works fast. Also, there is a P20i nano coating making it splash proof. All in all, it's a great looking phone with a well thought out design. If you are wondering where is the front camera then, well, it pops out with a twinkle. Hmm, we mean with the LED light which also doubles up as a notification light. Xiaomi claims it has been tested for 300,000 times and yes, there is a drop protection which means the pop-up will automatically go in if the phone is falling or someone hard presses on it. The front camera is 20 megapixel and it clicks decent selfies and of course, there is AI face unlock on board. Now coming to the rare optics, there is a triple camera set up on the back with a 48 megapixel AI main lens, a 30 megapixel ultra angle wide lens and an 8 megapixel telephoto lens. The results are amazing and the quality of pictures is as good as some of the premium phones, especially the portrait mode. The low light with night mode is decent too. The front of the phone is dominated by a 6.3 inch full HD plus AMOLED display. It is the first AMOLED display on a Redmi phone. The screen is nice and bright and watching videos and movies is a great experience on this phone as there is no interruption of the notch and hole and there is high res audio too. The K20 is powered by Snapdragon 730 and comes with 6GB of RAM. The phone is fast and so Xiaomi has also managed to lure in the gamer inside of us with its performance. There is the Gamer Turbo 2.0 mode for the gamers which enhances the gaming experience and Xiaomi claims the entire package of the phone may even help with having an advantage while playing games like PUBG and Fortnite. There is even an 8 layer graphite cooling system so that we don't end up burning our hands while playing games for hours. So are we impressed with the performance? Yes, we loved how the games loaded quickly and browsing was a breeze. There is a 4000 mAh battery and the phone lasted us a day with full charge. The Xiaomi Redmi K20 Pro will be launched in two variants, a 6GB plus 64GB priced at 21,999 rupees and the 6GB plus 128GB variant which costs 23,999 rupees. While Xiaomi's Redmi is a budget-friendly series, the lower-end flagship model packs in a whole lot more than what we can ask for. And that's what we really liked about the phone. The Redmi K20 is undoubtedly a good phone, but we do think it is priced slightly higher for what it offers. It faces a stiff competition from the Realme X, which is priced lesser than the K20. That said, the K20 doesn't disappoint and ticks all the right boxes. So the heart, the core, the brains of most phones and many other devices is of course the chipset inside. But it is an unsung hero because very few of us really know that there are devices in your own house that have a particular chipset or phones that are actually coming out have a particular chipset. So we decided to do this story. I have with me the LG W30, a phone that literally 
was a bestseller. I have with me the Vivo Y12 again with the 5000 mAh battery, a big seller. And the Oppo A1K. Now, these are just examples. But do you know what is common between the fact that other than the fact that these sold very well, are best-selling phones and most of you own it? That each of them have a fabulous chipset inside the MediaTek Helio P22. So why is it that so many companies, so many diverse companies across the board have started using this particular chipset? We'll take a quick look at each of the phones and then examine why they all opted for the MediaTek P22. The brain of a phone, as we all well know, is the chipset it sports. And that's why when a good performing chipset comes in our line of sight, it's hard to miss. This is the MediaTek Helio P22. Launched last year, its architecture took everyone by surprise, not just because of its specifications, but because it was a budget range rollout. But let's get our geek on and dive into what this chipset offers. The Helio P22 is a 64-bit chip with 8 octa cores. The chipset also incorporates Imagination's Power VR GE8320 GPU which operates with a max speed of 650 MHz and an LTE modem. It is a mid-range ARM LTE system on chip by MediaTek and is built on TSMC's 12 nanometer process. But for the uninitiated, what does all this mean? Well, this translates to fast CPU speed boosting game performance and graphics. This also means reducing battery consumption and a smooth performance on the phone. Many new smartphones from a range of brands have been launched with the P22. The most recent one was the hugely popular LG W30 that came with a triple camera setup with a 13 megapixel, 12 megapixel and a 2 megapixel camera. The camera has AI in it as well and with the P22 being the enabler, this phone gives great shots. The front camera is impressive with a 16 megapixel shooter and this phone comes in just below 10K. At a similar price point is the Infinix S4. This phone really makes use of the P22 chipset. It comes with a 32 megapixel AI selfie camera, a triple camera setup on the back, and a 4000 mAh battery. This is pretty incredible under 10K and the phone performs very well too. Another budget star, the Realme C2, also comes with the Helio P22. It comes with a large 4000 mAh battery which is enhanced by the chipset to go the extra mile and it even packs in a 5 megapixel front camera which gives pretty good selfies. This phone is priced at a whopping 5,999 rupees. Xiaomi's Redmi 6, which starts at 6,999 rupees, also sports the MediaTek Helio P22. This phone does well with a 12 and 5 megapixel lens, and the performance of this phone is pretty great. Even brands like Oppo and Vivo came out with phones with this chipset. The Oppo A1K comes with a dual camera, 2GB RAM, and is under 8K. It even supports HDR images. The Vivo Y12 pushes the envelope with a massive 5000 mAh battery and performs very well. The Helio P22 can be compared to the Snapdragon 439 or even the 450. The P22 has a faster CPU speed and even RAM speed than these two chipsets. And it's a big winner with phones under and around 10K. Let's take a quick break right now on the Selguru Show. When we come back, there's a whole lot more I still have to show you. Now it's time to do what I always love doing on the show, a shootout. Now these are two phones that we actually featured on the show one week after another. The Black Shark 2, which of course is a Xiaomi phone, and the Nubia Red Magic 3. The Nubia Red Magic 3 is just a trifle cheaper, about 3,000 rupees, lesser than the Black Shark 2. But both are extremely high performance gaming phones. So from these two phones, let's find out who wins the battle of the gaming phone. 2019 is shaping out to be a great year for gaming smartphones. We have with us the Nubia Red Magic 3 and Xiaomi's Black Shark 2. Both the phones are made to enhance your gaming experience. But then which is the better gaming phone? Let's find out. Both the Nubia Red Magic 3 and the Black Shark 2 are powered by the Snapdragon 855 processor. However, Red Magic 3 comes in 8GB and a 12GB RAM variant with 128GB and 256GB storage. And the Shark 2 comes with a 6GB and 8GB RAM variant with 128GB storage. We have the 6GB model of the Black Shark 2 which is priced at 39,999 rupees and the 8GB RAM model of the Nubia Red Magic 3 which costs 36,999 rupees. So if we talk about the price and RAM, we get that the Red Magic 3 gets this point, although the performance wise there's not much difference. Coming to display, the Red Magic 3 hosts a 6.65 inch screen which is slightly larger than the Shark 2's 6.39 inch display. 
both come with the same resolution. The Red Magic 3 gets this display point too as it comes with a bigger display which is better for gaming and a 90Hz screen refresh rate which is not on the Shark 2 and it makes a lot of difference for gamers. The Black Shark 2 has an in-display fingerprint sensor while the Nubia Red Magic 3 has one on the back. Here we prefer the one on the Shark 2. When it comes to optics, Black Shark 2 is ahead with dual camera and a better front camera than the Red Magic 3 making the Shark 2 a better camera phone from the Magic 3 for sure. When we talk about design, both offer a good grip to play games. Both have a metal body and come with a solid build. But here again, Nubia's phone is ahead as it comes with cooling fans, inbuilt to tackle the heat issue and also has a 3.5mm headphone jack. Again, good for gamers. Another aspect gamers should consider is the presence of shoulder buttons which makes the Magic 3 a sort of gaming console while playing a game. For the Black Shark 2, you will have to pick a separate attachment. Also, the Red Magic 3 has a bigger battery of 5000 mAh than the Shark 2's 4000 mAh which means it will last you longer when you are playing a game. The Verdict The Nubia Red Magic 3 is a clear winner and a better gaming phone than the Black Shark 2. The Black Shark 2 has very few advantages over Nubia which are not enough to win against the Red Magic 3. That then was the Cell Guru Show for this week. As always, we've got so much more coming next week. Let's take a look.